Okay, and you know how many times I want to take a look at some more demonstrations in static electricity. Now, actually, I want to break it down into two parts. The first part we'll start with is induction, and then we'll take a look at conduction. So, let's get started. Now, in the previous video, we looked at the behavior of charges. In this case, these vinyl strips are negatively charged, so they repel each other. When these acetate strips are rubbed with orlon, they become positively charged, and as we can see, they also repel each other. And finally, we saw that positive and negative charges attract. Now, one of the classic demonstrations of electrostatics is using a balloon and simply rubbing it across your head, and very quickly it becomes charged. In fact, if I lift it off my head, I can feel my hairs being attracted to it. The balloon has become negatively charged. It's taken electrons from me, and my hair, of course, has given up electrons, so it's a little bit positively charged, and so they're attracted. But if I take the same balloon and I put it on the wall, well, let's see what happens. It stays there, but I haven't done anything to the wall. So the question is, why is it staying there? The process is actually called induction. Now, when I rubbed that balloon on my hair, I gave it a negative charge. But the wall is actually an insulator, much like the styrofoam cup is. Now, if I take this glass and I rub it with Orlon, I'm going to give it a charge. And watch what happens when I bring it near these small pieces of foam. Now, what makes it an insulator? Well, their electrons in their atoms are bound up and they're not able to escape very easily. The atomic theory tells us that the nucleus is positively charged, surrounded by electrons which have an equal amount of negative charge. When a positive charge is brought near these atoms, the electrons shift over and are attracted to that positive charge. This process is called polarization. It's the electrons moving closer to the positive charge, but don't actually leave the atom. When we remove the positive charge, the electrons will balance themselves out again, and if we bring a negative charge near that same insulator, it's going to drive the electrons away to the opposite side of the nucleus, allowing the positive charge nucleus to be attracted to the negative charge. We remove it, and once again the electrons will balance themselves out. Now let's apply this theory to the balloon on the wall. As I rub the balloon against my head, it makes the balloon negatively charged. The wall itself is neutral, but as we bring the balloon closer to it, the negative charges causes the particles in the wall surface to become polarized, making an attraction between the balloon and the wall surface. If we move the balloon away, the wall becomes neutral again. With induction charging, there is no change in overall charges on either object. After the balloon sat on the wall for a while, it popped, but even then, the broken balloon still was attracted to the wall surface. Now, wood is actually a very good insulator. In this case, I have an 8-foot 2x4 hanging from the ceiling. And the charge on it is neutral, but we're going to see if we can move it with a static charge. Now we'll get a nice charge on our PVC pipe here and see if we can move it. Okay, there it goes. See if I can reverse directions. With induction charging, I don't have to touch the pipe to the wood, I just have to bring it near it. Let's try it on a smaller scale. Here's a positive charge brought near some little dots of paper. 
let's see that again in slow motion. Now let's go back to that moving of the can across the table. Here we'll try the can with an uncharged PVC pipe. Nothing happens because both objects are neutral. Let's put a charge on it, and now I can pull the can across the table. Now we also have a polarization of the electrons inside the can. Since the can is a metal and a conductor, it allows the electrons to move away from that negative charge, allowing the positive charge of the can to be attracted to the PVC pipe. The electrons aren't bound to stay with the atoms like they are with an insulator. Now we can also try this with a positive charge. In this case, the electrons are free to move towards the positive charge of the glass. Now, a classic piece of static electricity equipment is the electroscope. These devices were originally designed to detect and measure static charges. This one has two pieces of aluminum foil hanging down from wires attached to a bolt, comes up through the center, and has a large metal ball sitting on top of it. Let's try it with a negative charge. Once again, we have a polarization of the electrons away from that negative charge. Now let's try it with a positive charge. In this case, the electrons of the metal move towards the positively charged glass. Now let's try this on a smaller scale. I have some sugar and some salt and sand. Let's see what happens with some powders. We'll start out by testing the salt. I'll bring a negative charge near it, and some of the salt particles are attracted to it. We'll try it again with a positive charge, and if you look closely, we'll see that some of the particles hit the strip and then bounce off. Now let's try it again with some sugar. We'll try it with a positive charge, and we'll see some of the sugar is actually going to collect on the bottom of the strip. There we go. Now let's try it with a negative charge. I'll try it once more with sand. Now it is hard to see, but some of the powders are actually pushed away by the strips rather than being attracted to it. Now we saw how they behave on the table, but I think it's more interesting if we allow them to fall as a stream. We see the same behavior with salt and also with sugar. All right, let's see what happens with two charges at the same time. I think it's amazing how the sand spreads out with either a positive or a negative charge. If you think you know why it does this, I would love to hear your explanation down in the comments below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, go on to part two where we're looking at more demonstrations of conduction versus induction.